Hi everyone. So this is just a quick video to show off the new continuous testing feature that it's in Quarkus 2.0.0 Alpha 1. So I'm going to start by showing off our getting started example. Well, a slightly modified version with a few more tests. So all I've done is I've changed the Quarkus version to 2.0.0 Alpha 1 and changed it to the Quarkus bomb rather than the Quarkus uniform bomb, universe bomb. And now I'm going to run Quarkus dev. Now, you should see sort of the normal startup stuff appear, but now there's this new prompt down the bottom, which says test disabled, press E to enable. And you can see that this just always sits at the bottom, even when there's some additional log messages. So now I can press E and we can see that it's running all our tests. So I've got four tests and they all run and they all pass, which is good. And now I can actually go and code and break things. So if I change our greeting here to high, now we can see down the bottom that it's run two tests and one of them has failed. And it's only giving the output about the failed tests just so it doesn't sort of pollute your console with lots of additional information. Now, and the reason why it's only run two tests rather than all four is that when it runs that first lot of tests, it traces which code is actually affected by which tests. So it knows exactly which tests are affected by which changes and can just run a very small subset of your test suite to only, um, only test the things that need to be tested. So if, if you've got a large test suite, it won't, um, it won't run all the tests every time. So now we can go to this failing test and change it to check for high again. And now we're back to everything being passing. Now there are a few more commands that we can uh, run here. One of them is I can press, as you can see from this little status message, I can press R and it will rerun all four. It happens very, very quickly. I can press V to view the, view the uh, results again, but as there's no failures, there's nothing there to, just, to display. If I um, break the test, and then I can press V and it prints out the um, error output again. Uh, I can press D to just pause testing for a while and then press E again to re-enable it. And I can press, there's also a few more commands that appear if you press H. So one of these is broken only mode. So if I break this test, so I'll just change this here to high and now it's um, broken. If I put it in broken, and if I make changes to this test class, you can see that it's running two tests because I've changed this test class, it assumes it needs to run both of them. But then if I put it in broken only mode, now when I make changes to the test class, it only runs that one failing test. So this can be really useful if you've got some code that lots of tests can potentially touch, but you're only interested in the one that's failing. You can set it in broken only mode and really, um just target the uh, failing bit, to target the failing test. So now if I get that working again, now all tests have passed, and now if I make changes, it won't run anything unless I add a whole new test. So I'll add, oops. And it can be a failing test. And now if I've added that new test, it will pick up that it's a new one and run it to see if it's going to pass or fail or not. It fails, so it'll get rerun in broken only mode. And now it's passing, nothing will be run. So I'll turn that off. And um, another option we have here is O, which is to toggle the test output. So you might notice that the tests don't really print anything as they're running. So this is just so you don't have dev dev mode output and test output interleaved. If you want to see the test output, you can press O to toggle test output. And then now if we run them, we can see that we get the log output from Quarker starting up and shutting down as you would expect. Um, we can also turn on and off instrumentation based reload by pressing I, which isn't really a test related feature, but still something that's very useful to be able to do in dev mode. Now, another thing that is um, a work in progress is that we have in our dev console or dev UI, we now have this little uh, test status thing at the top here, and you can actually view the results in the dev UI and you can rerun the tests or pause them. 
So if I pause the test here, you can see that that just gets reflected back in the console and it, they all keep in sync. Um, this dev UI is very much still a work in progress. At the moment, the information it displays is very basic. That's why it's an alpha one release. Uh, there'll be a lot more information here and it'll be a lot more useful in the final release. Now, something else that um, is worth looking at is that I'll shut this one down and move to the uh, Hibernate ORM quick start and start this up. Now, this is using dev services to automatically create a PostgreSQL database when the application launches. So here, as I'm booting um, the quick start, you can see that um, it started a Docker started a PostgreSQL container and Quarkus has automatically wired that up. And now when I enable the tests, it might take a little while to run this first tests, this first test because it's starting a separate Postgres container to run your tests against. So you don't pollute your dev database with your tests or vice versa. So the tests are running against a clean database every time. Now, if I rerun them, it's much faster because it only starts it once and leaves it running while the application is is um, active. So there's some yeah nice uh, dev services integration there as well, um, and that's about that's about it for now. There's still a lot more work that needs to be done on this because it is an alpha level feature. So it would be great if you could try it out in your own applications and submit any feedback either in GitHub issues or on the mailing list, just so we can get this really polished and as good as possible for the uh, 2.0 final release. Thanks for watching.